Hey, everybody, and welcome to The Gay View. I'm Josh, your host, and we have Hector, we have Jamie, and we have Jeremiah, all these J's in the house. All right, and today we're going to be talking about something that's actually very important to our community. Um, we're going to be talking about safe sex. Um, thoughts, panel? It's important to have safe sex. There's no question about it. It's important to have sex. Everyone loves it. It's fun. It's fun and it's good. Definitely. I think that there definitely needs to be more education behind it, mm -hmm. especially in the gay community, just because there's not really... That's not taught in schools. Right. Like, you're kind of growing up and you're just going to the clubs and... But what is safe sex? Safe sex, sex is sex for... Yeah, for well, protection. Safe with, sex with some sort of protection. Thank you, right. Hector. <laughs> some sort of protection. <laughs> Well, he said safe. Well, I think it's interesting because a lot of people would say safe sex is with a condom, and you said safe sex is with protection. And actually, we were talking earlier about prep. Um, now, can you tell us a little more about prep and what it is? Uh, prep is uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis. It's taking a medication once a day to prevent HIV infection. Now, similar yeah. to the way a woman would take birth control to prevent getting pregnant. Um, is that uh, begins with a Truvida? Truvada. Truvada. And what other? I know there's another one. No, it's just Truvada. Okay, and I, I, as I recall, uh, I, I did read a couple papers of research. It was 99, isn't it 99.9% .9 effective? We, 96%. 96%. Yeah. 96% effective. I mean, that's pretty amazing statistic. I mean, um, I'm 30 years old, and when I think back to the 80s, 85, anybody who was around their 20s around that time, who's 50 now, they, they, they had to see their friends die from AIDS mm -hmm. um, because that was a big explosion. I mean, your, your friends were dropping like flies. Um, so... Um, going to our community now when it comes to safe sex, I mean, how do we teach young people? And do you think that PrEP is causing people to be more promiscuous? Or is it really actually helping us as as like as a group? Good question. Um, so it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword, to be honest with you. I think that, you know, part of it is the issue with, obviously, okay, so we're not going to be contracting HIV anymore. That's not a fear. So we don't have to use a condom. But the problem is that... That still puts you at risk for other STDs. You've got gonorrhea, chlamydia. Gonorrhea, by the way, is incredibly oh, and popular with the gays. A, don't they have a strong uh, that they can't Well, it's not that they can't cure it, but it's high resistance, which mm -hmm. means that it takes more antibiotic to cure it. You know, and then you also living here in Tampa, you have extremely high rates of syphilis. We have some of the highest rates in the nation. Mm -hmm. And I think we all know syphilis is bad. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> You know, and, and it, it's especially worrisome when you start looking at someone who's a bottom. And, you know, bottoms, so the, the life cycle of syphilis is that it starts out as a sore. But if you're a bottom and that sore happens inside of the rectum, how do you see it? Okay. How do you know that it's there? Right. Mm -hmm. And so that sore doesn't hurt. That's one of the tricks of syphilis. It doesn't hurt. And it goes away after a couple of weeks. And, you know, for a long time, people would get, well, and it still happens. People get that sore, that chancre on their penis or on their vagina. Then, and they, you know, not their vagina, but their vulva or whatever. And they think that it goes away after a couple of weeks. It doesn't hurt. It's worked itself out. It's good to go. But now you've got this bacteria that's living in your bloodstream. And th the scary thing is that with PrEP, so few people are taking those extra precautions to protect themselves from those diseases that you contract just through contact just with the exchange of fluids, hmm. like gonorrhea, chlamydia, syphilis, herpes. But what's in, <laughs> but one thing I want to talk about, too, is um, there are a lot of people in long-term relationships. Do they need to use PrEP? Do they need to use condoms? Well, it depends on your situation. You absolutely should. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I'm, I've never had a partner who I've been with 24-7. Well, I've never had a partner. <laughs> I've always been explicit to my partners. Well, I, I mean, I was, uh, this, this is more so personal to me because I was in a, a, a five year relationship with somebody. Oh, four year relationship. Let's do it that way. Um, but we were exclusive and I got an STD because they were not being exclusive apparently. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how does, I mean, so it, it is something that's important to me because one, I mean, you need to be cured all the way. Um, but you need to be, you, 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 you want to, you, like, how do you deal with something like that? Um, whether you're in a relationship or not, should everybody use prep? I mean, everybody should take common sense steps to keep themselves safe, right? I mean, right. you should limit your partners. You Definitely. should use condoms and you should, I'm not saying don't trust anyone, you know, but 
No, don't, don't trust people. anyone. <laughs> no, don't trust people. And, and what about our yeah. youth? Because you deal with the youth a lot. What could we do um, as steps to kind of help them with safe sex? I know we I know we touched on education, <laughs> things along those lines, but like you know, I don't I don't I don't think that having free condoms at the bar is enough. It's not. It's I never use. No, it's definitely not enough. No, it's definitely not. I think too with the education process, like we're we're needing to educate these youths coming out of school that are growing up without an environment with this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I know that community centers especially have, like, specific programs, the HIV 501. Mm -hmm. um, there's different methods that you can get educated in, and I don't feel a lot of gay youths are doing that. Or there's not many offers where, like, hey, you need to be educated right, about right. this. Like, this is something you need to know about, and I feel like that's a lot where we're lacking. So do you think that our education, um, when it comes to safe sex, just needs to be, like, revamped? Um, things along those lines? Yeah, and along with, like, community center outreaches, mm -hmm. um, like, definitely something that needs to be brought into the light into schools. I know that's probably not going to be comfortable. Well, sex is already taught in schools, but it's very, it, uh, mm, there's a stick, there's a, it's taught um, in some straight schools. sex is <laughs> taught like in schools. Though, it's <laughs> like straight, straight sex is right. taught But in it's schools. not even taught, uh, it, it's really, you're taught biology, you're taught a girl has true. an egg, a true, boy true, has true. a sperm, they meet, that's where a baby comes from, that's it. You get a 45 minute class in school, you know, that's not enough to teach someone about safety, about what it means to be in a healthy relationship, which... Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, if you're in a healthy relationship, I, I, your I would not really mine. like to see that actually. Healthy relationship and sex ed all together in one. Because that would be a great, that'd be a great, I, I should have took that class. <laughs> <laughs> we all should have. <laughs> yeah, don't. Going back to what he Love your was awkward laugh. About education and the youth. Honestly, I think you should be held accountability for yourself. Mm -hmm. the, the education is out there. You do have right. um, outreach groups who are going to the clubs and asking people, mm -hmm. would you like to get tested? But, I've seen but would you like to get tested and safe sex are two different things? I, I think. Am I wrong? But you mentioned... I think they're the same. Okay. Repeat you the know. question I got to you now. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, that I, I think that safe sex and um, asking somebody to get tested or, and getting tested are two but different you have things. people giving out oh. condoms, though. Those are the same groups of people that are giving out condoms to the people that are at the bars. Okay. And what I've seen is people right away push those people away. No, I'm going to get yeah. tested. No, I'm okay. Like you said, you have condoms in the bars and the clubs, but who's really using them? But I, but I, I, be the yeah. reason, for you. but the Absolutely. reason why, I, and I, I've had people come up to me and say, hey, do you want to get tested? The reason why I don't want to get tested is because I'm actually just trying to get in line and get a drink. I don't want to go through the process of yeah, getting no, tested no. right now. That's going to be about an hour. No, I can get tested on my own time, but I don't, I don't want to, that's not an appropriate place and time to ask somebody to get tested. Right. There, there is, it, it's well, like going, it's like when like, you're in the grocery mm, store line and hey, by the way, would you like to get tested with your watermelon? It's just not the right. Well, I do agree to, to a degree. I've yeah. never I do agree to a degree unless it was like at a gay festival or yeah, like something. Bar, that... I mean, I've I've done I've been that person going out to the gay club mm -hmm. saying, "Hey, do you want to get tested?" You know, I've been turned down, yeah. and it's fine getting turned down. But I mean, at least take the information. At least say, you know, right. you're right. giving me yeah, a right. business card that says where I can get tested. Mm -hmm. That's great. Or at least take the initiative to show up in your own free time. You know, right. at least say, okay, that you're right. I should get tested. The scary thing to me is how many people will wait more than a year to get tested. Is that wrong? That is wrong. What's the time frame that people should When's use? the last time you had sex? Oh. A long time me ago. Too. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> it was a long <laughs> time ago. It's a long, wow. winding road. Three months after is when you should get tested again. Okay. Three months after. Okay. Three months after. Oh, um, I, because I know you would know this uh, more so than most, um, incubation periods. Because um, we were just talking about that. What would be like a... Uh, so you, three months after, would that be incubation period? Well, we wouldn't really call it the incubation period. It's the, it's the period of cell conversion, which is when your blood... Oh, well, sounds better. ...changes. <laughs> it sounds fancy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I got what it's cell conversion. Fancy. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, the, it's the period when your body starts to produce the antibodies. Okay. When um, serum means blood and conversion means changing. So your blood is now producing the antibodies to the HIV virus. And... There, you know, the rapid test that you go and get that takes 15 minutes, it's taking three months for the, for your blood to produce the antibodies at a level that the test can detect it. So if I, if I, if I had sex, um, with somebody who 
is infected, there's a strong likelihood if I get a test um, after I have sex, a month after, it's not going to detect anything. Correct. Well, and the thing is, you have to understand the HIV life cycle, That I didn't too. know. Because, well, it's HIV, it's science. But, you know, it's, <laughs> science is fun. You're like, like the magic school bus. Right. But it's, All Miss Frizzle. Yes. <laughs> take chances and make mistakes. <laughs> it's the worst chance you can take. <laughs> but, um, no, it's, you, you know, your your body, um, the, the HIV life cycle, what it does is it, it you go into a period of... Oh, what sort I'm looking for? You, um, you peak, sort of. The virus has the opportunity to com- to reproduce and sort of take over your body. Mm-hmm. And then after that happens is when your body finally figures out what's going on and starts to produce the antibodies and sort of fight the infection. And that's when the test can pick it up. Well, if I have sex with Hector mm-hmm. and then three weeks later have sex with you, by that point, I'm already peaking in my HIV viral load which means that now I'm the most infectious. So when you see someone say to you, oh, I just got tested last week, what that really means is I got tested last week, not that I'm HIV negative. Oh, okay. That is something that everybody should know. (laughs) That is something everybody should know. So I got tested last week. I had sex three weeks ago. I'm crawling with HIV. And I was tested. Now you think that we're good to go. Now, um, oral test versus blood test. Um, it's the same. Are, are they really? The, yeah, they're the oral same. Tests just they're the same. Accurate? Yeah. Okay. But you can buy, I, I encourage if you're afraid to go get tested at your clinic, go buy an oral short test. Go to Walgreens, buy it. It's $60. I think it's dumb because you could get it for you free. You can get it for free. But if you want to spend the $60 and have the confidential test, go for it. Huh. But and then uh, another <laughs> thing. Everyone's too, night. Well, yeah. no, 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 no. Uh, same thing first. Yeah. But another thing I want to know is, um, I, I will admit it's been a while since I've been tested, but it's also been a very long time since I had sex. Um, and it was <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. Um, so the 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 thing that keeps me from going in is that whole like you know when you sit there and you're nervous and you're waiting for like thirty minutes while someone's just sitting there asking you, well, do you take it up, you know? the anus and you know do you do this and that and i'm going through like my whole life history of sex yeah. and you want to be as on, as honest as possible with your doctor then granted they see everything um but it i think that the the testing process is a tad bit uncomfortable i mean i, I I'm, I'm not asking for a chase lounge but i mean and maybe some coffee but you know if you're gonna stick a q-tip up my you know buy me dinner first or something i mean come on <laughs> Although that's another thing. I think that more gay men should be willing to let them stick a swab up their rectum. Right. Truthfully, because, you know, gonorrhea and chlamydia can live in the rectum and not be detected through a urine test that way. It's going to be uncomfortable. Like, you're, that's just something we have to Frankly, do. Like, you I mean, if you're having sex, like, something you. else up mm-hmm. there, I feel as if it's fine to take a few tips. <laughs> totally. Like, I, totally. I, 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 will, I will, have no sympathy. I'll let you have that one. I'll let you have no that sympathy. one. <laughs> I find it interesting how people are afraid to go get tested because... What the results might be? Right. Or not knowing the doctor. Yeah. But that doesn't then, change the fact that you have anything okay. like that. But, but then I can sleep with a stranger and that's, so, that's fine. Them. Yeah. Or crazy, wherever we go to meet people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People are afraid to get tested, not knowing who the doctor is or how, what the test is about. But they're not afraid to hook up with a random person on the street. Right. But yet you're shocked when you get something. That's another topic for another day. <laughs> but I trust him. <laughs> I, but I trust, trust him. He bought me two beers. He How mean could he be? Right. <laughs> but that's another topic for another day. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for viewing and tuning in today. And thank you so much, Hector, you're Jamie, welcome. and Jeremiah.